congregation. Yeah. And when he got there, he preached a dynamic message the first Sunday. But a member died, and he had to commit the body. And as a result, he didn't get to prepare another message. So he preached the same message the second Sunday. And sad to say, another member died. And you know what he did? He preached the same message the third Sunday. All right. And some of the deacons didn't like that. So it's one of those groups that they have somebody that basically oversees. So they oversees the entire work. Yeah. So they went and complained on the preacher mm -hmm. and said, we don't like this young preacher because he preached the same message three Sundays in a row. Mm -hmm. Consecutively, three <laughs> Sundays, the same message. And the overseer said, what was the title of the message? He said he need to preach it another Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm hoping that the message I preach today will be long remembered. But I don't have to preach it another time. You preach it again. <laughs> they, they, the text that was read, 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 16. I see a sister looking at me. I know, and she's saying in her mind, I know that person. I think she do. You know, she probably from Clarendon. She used to worship with the Williams and Jack Monday Road, somewhere thereabout. But let's look back at the text. What I want you to do, I'm going to read this from a couple of translations, different translations, for you to get the significance of this text. From the King James Version, it reads, that's 1 Corinthians 9 and verse 16. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. Mm -hmm. For necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is me if I preach not the gospel. From the New King James Version, which is not much different. It says, for if I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast of. For necessity is laid upon me. Yes, woe is me if I do not preach the gospel. The NIV. But when I preach the gospel, I cannot boast, since I'm compelled to preach. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. From the International Children Bible. Listen to this. Telling the good news is not my reason for bragging. Telling the good news is my duty, something I must do. And how bad it will be for me if I do not tell the good news. Mm -hmm. Listen to the common English translation. It reads thus, if I preach the gospel, I have no reason to brag since I'm obligated to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm in trouble if I do not preach Amen. the gospel. Amen. My topic this evening is, woe is me if I preach not the gospel. The gospel. Good message. Mm -hmm. Woe is me if I preach not the gospel. You see, when we think about our lives, it is important. A lot of times we have people said, what is important is the type of life we live, the example we set. Mm -hmm. As people read us, as people look at us, they should see Jesus Christ living in us. Mm -hmm. And nothing is wrong with that. No. Because the only gospel some man would probably ever read your is your life that's right. and my life. That's right. And that's what Philippians chapter 1 and verse 27 says. It says, only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you are absent, I may hear of your fears, that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel Amen. of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So our life should be the gospel of Jesus Christ. But I'm here to tell you that that's not enough. God wants us to open our mouth. Mm -hmm. He wants us to tell to preach, to share, to teach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. The one of the reasons why I think Paul said, woe is me, and you just think of that statement, it's really frightening, isn't it? <laughs> woe is me if I preach not mm -hmm. the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what about you, but I, when I read that, a little bit of fear and tremor get into my bones because I'm wondering, is Paul saying that I have to be careful that I don't try to go to heaven alone. Mm. Uh -oh. 
The first thing I want for us to look at as we discuss this subject, I think Paul made this statement because the gospel is about the love, the mercy, and grace of God. Amen. So if that is not preached, what's going to happen to the, the world in which we live? And I, I can hear, you know, Jesus Christ saying in John chapter 3, verse 16 and something, it says, For God so what? Love the world. Love the world that whosoever what? Believeth in him should not perish, but what? Have everlasting life. You know what verse 17 says? For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Now, Let's jump to Romans chapter 5, if you have your Bible. You can't preach without the word of God. So let's turn to Romans chapter 5 from verse 6 to verse 8. And listen to what the scripture says. For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates, God manifests his own love towards us in that while we were still what? Sinners. We're still what? Sinners. Sinners, Christ died for us. Just imagine it. Just imagine this for a minute. You commit a terrible crime. You actually kill the family. Everybody except the father. And you were ordered to be executed. The electric chair. Mm -hmm. The voltage thing is resting on your head. The executioner is holding the switch, the handle to the switch. And he's about to pull it. And you know who run in? The father of, that, of those persons you have killed. The husband. And he said, don't, don't, don't do it. I will die for him. Why, why, why? Why do you want to do that? These are people, they just executed your family. He just executed your family. Why do you want to die for him? And he said, I want to do this. Jesus because Christ. I still love him. Yeah, yeah. All I want you to do for me is, after I set you free, just go tell somebody how much I love you. Yeah. Talk to me now, brothers and sisters and friends. If somebody do that for you, would you gladly go tell? Mm -hmm. Who you said, remove this thing quickly because I can't wait. You know, Jesus Christ has done that for us. He did it, yeah. But are we telling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are we sharing the love of God? Mm -hmm. We were condemned to die. That's right. And Jesus freely, freely took our place. That's right. He died so that you and I could live. Yeah. We have a message we must tell about the grace of and love of God. And that's what Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 2 says. It says, walk in love as Christ also has loved us and gave himself for us an offering, a sacrifice for God, to God for a sweet smelling aroma. Yeah, yeah. God love truly manifests God's grace. Ephesians 2 from verse 1 to verse 5, the Bible tells us, and who he had made alive were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, mm -hmm. the spirit now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also you were all once conducting yourselves in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, just as others. Verse 4, but God, don't you clap that it's about God? But God. In spite of this description, it's about God for you and I. Amen. And that's what the scripture is saying. But God who is rich in what? Mercy. mercy. Because yeah. of his what? Great love. Not just his love. But his great love with which he loved us. And verse 5. Even when we're dead in trespasses, mm -hmm. he made us alive together with Christ right. by grace. You have been saved. Been saved. That's right. That's Brothers right. and sisters, as we share the gospel, it behoves us. It must be made abundantly clear that we cannot do anything to make it to heaven. No matter how hard we work, it's by God's grace we are saved. Grace, that's right. I don't mean that we should not be obedient. Are you with me? Right. But I can tell you, we can't work 
are waiting to heaven. Right. We cannot. If you come here, open this church building, close this church building, and Sunday, the 8 o'clock service, the 11 o'clock service, the 6 o'clock service, and you're here on, for the, the satellite Bible class, if you're here on Wednesday, and you do everything, it still wouldn't be enough. Right. It's the grace of God grace. that made you and I who we are today. Amen, amen. For the wages of sin truly <coughs> is death, but the gift of God, God is eternal life. Right. It is God's grace. It is through God's grace that we are saved. It's through God's mercy. It's through God's love. And I just quickly want to tell you, secondly, we must preach the gospel because the gospel is the good news about Jesus. The gospel is the good news about Jesus Christ. Paul says, I intend to know nothing among you save Jesus Christ him. and him crucified. First right. Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 2. And you remember what Paul says in First Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 1? The Bible says, more brethren, I declare right. to you the gospel which I preach to you, which also you receive and where in want you stand. By which also you are saved if you hold fast that word that I preach unto you. Unless you believe it in vain. Verse 3 says, For I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And for that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to to the scriptures. Amen, amen. The beginning, the middle, and the end of the gospel is all about Jesus Christ. Right. It's all about Jesus Christ. If we miss that, we truly, truly miss it all. A lot of times we want to hear good things. We want to make hear things that really tickle our ear. But what we need to hear is about Jesus Christ and his demand and us to preach the gospel. Yeah, right, right. Brothers and sisters, truly, the central theme of the gospel is about Jesus Christ and him crucified. Amen, amen. You remember the Ethiopian eunuch? He was leaving worship. And the Spirit of God said to the Ethiopian, to Philip, join yourself to the chariot. And he ran. I don't know how fast that chariot was going, but it seemed that the gospel message was so urgent that Philip catch up <laughs> with the chariot. Right, right. Remember, it's horses pulling that thing. Yeah. And he watched, got there, the man was reading something, and he said, do you understand what you read? He said, oh, can I understand unless somebody guide me? Amen, sure. right. Right. And the Bible says, from that same scripture, what did he do? Appreciate he preached unto him who? Jesus. He preached unto him who? Jesus. Jesus Christ. That is the message. But you can't preach Jesus. I mean, you cannot preach Jesus and don't preach <laughs> Baptism. That's right. That's the man right. said he preached to Jesus, but he was going and said, "Here is water. Right. What does end me from being baptized?" It means then the message that he heard about Jesus had baptism as a part of it. Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters and friends, we need to realize that we have a serious obligation to take the message to whosoever will. Right. Remember who God is pleased with. You remember on the Mount of Transfiguration? And Moses appeared. Yeah. Elijah yeah, appeared. Yeah. And Jesus appeared. Yeah. And the voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. Listen to him. Hear him. The message must be about Jesus Christ. Yeah. The Bible says he came into the world so that he can save us from all sins. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I think the time has come for us to wake up. And we probably need a little bit of shaking up. Because I think we sit too comfortable in these comfortable pews. <laughs> yeah. All right. Ouch. You never hear the story about the group that lined up in front of a church building. No reached round the corner to the next turn, the next turn. And people were just wondering what was happening. Mm. And somebody managed to get right up to the front. And when he got there, he realized Jesus Christ was chained to the pulpit. Mm. And therefore, we have to get to the building. But that's the way it should be. Talk to me, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. We should take the name of Jesus with us wherever we go. Everywhere. Everywhere. Mm -hmm. On the streets. In our homes. Mm -hmm. At our workplace. At church. How are we doing? You know, and I, I'm not 